Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're definitely not going to overreact. You know? I mean, the, the number one thing to us as coaches was it's a new team. We brought in 10 new guys. You know, we, we got guys from different backgrounds. We got a, a bunch of bigs. We're trying to incorporate all these things in a short period of time. Like, you, this is a long game, you know? So, like, there's no overreaction. I think we start with we got out hustled in game one. You know, we didn't win any 50-50 balls, gave up offensive rebounds. Let's start there, because um, that's something that we can control every night. It's not necessary, but it's an option. You know, we, we can continue to explore the big lineups. Um, as much as anything, we're just trying to get familiar with our players. You know, how do they, who are they? How do they fit together? Um, what are the rotations, combinations, and, and, and lineups that we can go to? So, you know, it, it's just, we're really in experimental phase right now, trying to, trying to learn about ourselves. You know, I think even when we go big, we're not like big, big, you know? So it's got to be gang rebounding. We have to have that mentality throughout the year, no matter if we're playing big or small. Um, so it's not all on the bigs, it's on the team to rebound collectively and to have that mentality and mindset that, you know, that's an Achilles heel for us. And, you know, losing the possession game is something that we know has, has troubled us um, in the past year. So. Addressing that by gang rebounding, by taking care of the basketball, by winning 50-50 balls, you know, I think those are things that can get, approach um, some equality in the shot discrepancy. And, and I think when we do that, we have a lot of talent and we have a great chance to make more shots than the other team. Last season, you guys, I guess, weren't the best rebounding team. And, you know, defensively, it was you know, great run day, maybe not the next. But you were always able to maybe rely on the fact that you could potentially outscore somebody. Yeah, I mean it's not going to be exactly the same. You know, he, he's a you know an incredible player, um, but we can still play excellent offensive basketball and be a high-powered offense. You know, I think it's still like I said, it's going to take time. We got a lot of guys that come from different backgrounds, play different styles, um, trying to bring that together isn't something that's going to happen in the first week or two of the season you know so um, right now I think it's it's important times for us to try to start to lay those foundations create those connections have an understanding and that takes time Yeah, we, we love them playing together. You know, I think that's uh, another option that hopefully we'll see more of, um, you know, in, in time. Um, you know, I don't know how much we'll lean on it early, but, you know, we can, you can see a shooting lineup against, with a rolling big as uh, a facet of our game, especially if we go small. For sure, for sure. Bruce is going to play for us this year. You know, Bruce is going to have to, you know, be patient. But we know what Bruce brings to the team. We know that if uh, we need competitiveness and combativeness and energy, we, we know what we got in Bruce. So he's definitely going to play for us. He's definitely going to be a part of what we do. I just think right now we're looking and exploring some other things to, so we understand what we have. And, you know, with Bruce, I know what we got. We got a great competitor who can guard, stick his nose in there against different sized matchups. Um, you know, he's a, you know, I think a great roller in the pick and roll and we know what he brings and he'll be a part, he'll be a big part of this team. I think, I think you, yeah. 
I think everything you said is true. Like a uh, little bit of conditioning. He's still got a ways to go, but his conditioning's improving. You know, the size and matchups, you know, we took a look at that. Just be a little bit bigger to start. Like I said, explore the bigger lineups. Um, you know, he is a roller for James, which is, uh, you know, I think another positive. So, but again, it's just, it's a lot of experimenting at this point still. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, you recognize the talent that Ben Simmons brings, uh, you know, offensively with his, you know, his size, speed, and playmaking. Um, defensively, you know, he's uh, obviously a very elite defender. Having said that, you know, they anchor their game around Joel. So they have shooting around him. They're very, very effective. Um, they've played really hard. And uh, defensively, I think, you know, he is that anchor that allows them to be really good. Um, and makes it a lot of clarity for their perimeter guys that they have him behind them. So, you know, while Ben's a great player, they're a terrific team at both ends of the floor, with or without him. It's great. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I definitely, uh, I always kind of undersell these things and sweep them aside. Um, but if I take a minute, it's, it's an incredible group of people to be a part of, and the accomplishment is um, you know, pretty incredible when you look back to the beginning. So I'm, I'm very proud and, um, and grateful, and I owe a lot of gratitude to all my coaches, teammates, family, people that supported me along the way, but you know, I'm also the type of person that uh, pretty much forgot about it. <laughs> you know, it's not, it's not the way I roll, I, my, my, my job is to be a good dad and to help these guys get over the line. And we got a lot on our plate right now trying to get through this experimental phase. I mean, you're coaching also two guys. Yeah. Obviously, you don't pay attention to those guys, but, you know, does that in any way affect how you look at them? No, uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, it probably struck me more that they were on there. It makes me feel proud for them and proud to coach them. Um, you know, they're still playing and they're already at that point is uh, incredible. And um, just trying to be here to support and help them get over the line with this group is, uh, you know, something that I, I feel very fortunate and grateful to be able to do. And I look forward to doing every day. I mean, it's going to hurt, but, uh, we're, you know, there's a good chance we make errors. There's a good chance we lose games. Like, that stuff happens when you're trying to figure things out. We're not going to overreact. You know, we, we, we're we really concerned with how are we in March, April, May. You know, are we are we at, the, at that at the business end of the season? Or do we have momentum, belief, certainty, clarity, uh, and understanding? That's what really matters. Um, so I know, like, everyone wants to react to wins and losses right now, and we want to win every game. But we're not overreacting if the wins don't come, you know, out the gate. Uh, do I think we can win tomorrow night and subsequent games? Absolutely. But, you know, we're also prepared to stick with it and to go through it. And in my experience, whenever you go through difficult times, times where you're challenged and you're forced to communicate, work together, dig deep to make something better, that's when you get the most growth. So we have to also look at this as a positive period where we can really ask ourselves a lot of questions and find solutions.